All right, everyone. In this video, let's learn about the use selector hook. What I'm going to do is leave the cake container as it is and create a new file. Let's call this hooks cake container dot js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a function component. For the JSX, we only need two things. We need an h2 tag that indicates the number of cakes and a button to dispatch the buy cake action. All right, now that we have our component in place, let's get back to the topic of use selector. Now, what is it? Use selector is a hook the React Redux library provides, which acts as a close equivalent to the map state to props function we have already seen. So to get hold of any state that is maintained in the Redux store, we use the use selector hook. For our example, we need to access the number of cakes which is stored in the Redux store. Let's see how to do that. First, we need to import use selector from React Redux. So import use selector from React Redux. Then within the component, we call use selector. This hook accepts a function as its parameter. And this function is called as the selector function. The selector function receives the Redux state as its argument. Very similar to the map state to props function. The function can then return a value. And for our example, we need to return state dot number of cakes. So state dot number of cakes. The use selector hook basically returns whatever is returned by this selector function. So let's save that value. Const number of cakes is equal to use selector. What we have basically done is access the number of cakes in the Redux state and stored it in a variable called number of cakes that belongs to our React component. The final step is to include this variable in the JSX. So within parentheses, number of cakes. Let's now include this component in app component and test it out. Hooks cake container. And if I now go back to the browser, you can see that we are able to access the state value from the Redux store. What is missing now though, is the button click handler. Let's implement that in the next video.